Dirtle Magic. Hello and welcome back. You can follow our post on Twitter and Facebook at DirtleMTG to stay up to date on our latest videos and other posts, and you can join a more robust discussion about Casual Commander at our blog, thedicebag.blog. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content to help the channel and the blog grow. Another way you can support the channel, though, is through our affiliate links in the description below. If you're looking for single sealed product or gaming accessories to protect all of that glory, please consider clicking the links into the description. Now, grab some spells, it's time to dirtle. Greetings. We travel from the territories of Sokenzanshi to Igonjo to visit Norika Yamazaki, the poet. Her audience includes today Nivenrol, Kaneas and Tiro of Miletis, or Miletus, not sure how you say that one, and Jarina Kudro. K and T win the die roll and begin the game with a forest. That's followed by a soul ring. Jarina's turn has a swamp come into play. They then cast a skull clamp. I draw cast out on my turn and drop a planes, feeling left out with no turn one play. Nevi plays a watery grave untapped and takes two damage. They cast Preordain, scrying two and drawing a card. Grixis Panorama enters the battlefield for KNT and they crack it for an island. Jarena plays a mountain and passes. I receive a giver of runes. I drop a field of ruin and cast the giver. To the Tyrant of Urborg and a scrubland comes into play. A Danto Vanguard is cast and they pass. KNT cast Vision Screens, which causes each player to draw two cards. I get Swords to Plowshares and Court of Grace. A plane enters for that player afterward. To Jarena, and they drop a Silver Quill Campus. They tap their lands and pass, discarding Adriana, Captain of the Guard. I gain an Oramanser on my turn, and drop a Rogue's Passage into play. I cast Ghostly Prison, and move to attacks. I swing the giver into the KNT player, dealing one damage, and pass the turn. Nevi plays a planes on their turn. Palace Familiar comes down, and that's followed by Doomed Traveler. A mountain enters for the KNT player, and they cast Hive Mind. Every instant in sorcery now gets copied for each player at the table. Drina plays a swamp, and then they cast Fireflux Squad. I draw planes, and play it. I decide to cast Court of Grace since I have Prison out, and pass drawing a war room with the monarchy at the end of turn. Nevi has an island come into play. Reach through mists is cast, and gets copied for each player. Each player therefore draws one card, with me gaining Archon of Absolution. Doom Dissenter comes down for Nevi, and they pass. Back to KNT, and Tundra hits the field. They then cast their commander. Swiftfoot Boots comes down, and is equipped to the boys from Elites. They pass without attacking, and KNT triggers on the end step. I drop a war room into play. Snowfield Sinkhole opens up on Jarena's field. They then cast their commander, who triggers and makes a 1 1 human soldier creature token. To combat, and the Fireflux attacks in a Nevi, and they block with the Vanguard. In the second main, Skull Clamp is attached to the token, which dies and draws that player two cards. To my turn, and the Court of Grace triggers, giving me a 4 4 flying angel token. I draw a planes and put it into play. I cast Cast Out, targeting the Hive Mind when it comes into play. I pass the turn, and draw a Sigil of the Empty Throne from the Monarchy. To the Tyrant, and they drop a Command Beacon. Sightless Ghoul comes into play, and it's followed by Consider. To KNT's turn, Royal Quarry Tower enters the battlefield. They activate Kessig's Wolf Run, targeting KNT and granting them plus 4 plus 0 and Trample. In combat, they swing their commander into me, and I block with my Angel token. I take 2 commander damage, and the attacking player gains the monarchy. They go to the end step, and draw a card, and put an opal palace into play. I also draw a card from KNT's trigger. Over to Jarena, and they cast Crackling Doom. Each opponent takes 2 damage, and Giver of Runes, KNT, and Sightless Ghoul are all sacrificed. Alesha, who smiles at death, is cast, and they move to combat. Fireflux swings into the KNT player, dealing 6 and gaining the monarchy. At the end of turn, they discard a Savai Crystal. On my turn, Court of Grace creates a spirit token with flying. I draw Touch the Spirit Realm, which is probably safer than the Shadow One I'd wager. I play a Plains, and then cast Sigil of the Empty Throne. I then cast Reconnaissance, gaining an Angel token. I pass with mana up for the Swords to Plowshares. Nevi's turn sees a sad robot cast. They retrieve a Swamp with the trigger. Lilith Reich is then cast for some card draw, 
and Doom Dissenter is sacrificed. They gain a zombie token when it dies, and they move to combat. Sightless Ghoul, Doom Traveler, and Pals Familiar all swing into KNT, dealing 5 total damage. Back to KNT, and a Tropical Island hits the field. They cast Mirari's Wake, and it's probably the billionth time I've seen that this week, so I groan aloud. Mation, the Mind Cage, then enters the battlefield, powering down all of the creatures equal to KNT's hand size. They then cast Prosperity, and each player draws 3 cards. I gain a Norn's Annex, Elspeth's Sun's Champion, and a Plains. Jirina's turn sees the arrival of Nahiri the Harbinger. They activate her minus two and exile Mirari's Wake, to my relief. They move to combat and swing the Fireflux squad and Alesha into the KNT player, triggering both creatures. Fireflux morphs away the Alesha into Judith the Scourge Diva. KNT takes only one damage thanks to the Mind Gauge. At the end of the turn, they have to discard four cards. To my turn, and I gain another spirit token. I cast Touch the Spirit Realm, and exile under it the Scourge Diva, and gain another Angel token. I cast the Archon of Absolution, and pass. Nevi's turn has another Swamp enter the field. They then decide to leave the game, though I'm unsure why. KNT's turn has Impulse at the stack, and they basically get to scry 4 and draw 1. Arid Mesa hits the field, and is cracked for a Taiga. KNT is then recast, and they try to equip the Swiftfoot Boots to their commander. I respond with a sword to plowshares, and the commander goes back to the command zone. The Jarena player plays the planes, and they cast Titan Hunter. Nahiri's plus two is activated, and they discard a card and draw a card. They pass, taking four damage from the Titan Hunter's triggered ability, and draw a card from the monarchy. I gain yet another spirit, and draw a Sun Titan on my turn. Without being able to damage my opponents with my creatures, I decide to dirtle up. I cast Elspeth, and activate her plus one for three soldier tokens. I pass, taking 4 damage from the Hunter. Over to KNT, and they recast their commander again, and it comes into play a 3 1 1 counters on it because they use Opal Palace. Boots gets equipped, and they pass. They take 4 damage at the end of turn, and I choose to draw a card from the KNT trigger. It's Bastion Protector. Jarena casts General's Enforcer to start their turn. Nahiri is activated again for some rummaging, and I begin to worry about my enchantments, as well as her ultimate. Boris Garrison comes into play, and they bounce a land back to their hand. Thraben Doomsayer is then gas. There's been a bunch of doom related cards this game. At the end of turn, still no creatures have died, and they take 4 damage, but draw a card, and then discard a card. Another turn, another spirit token. I draw an Archon of Sons of Grace. Nifty. I activate War Room, losing 1 life and drawing a Mistfield Plains. I drop the Mistfield Plains, and activate Elspeth for 3 more soldiers. I then decide I have enough board presence for my next turn, and cast Bounding Engine, which will be able to destroy the Mind Cage later. I pass, and take the 4 damage. Rootbound Crag comes into play for the KNT player. Moat is then cast, and creatures without flying can't attack. Skyclave Relic hits the stack kicked, and they gain 3 total relics when it comes into play. They pass, taking another 4 damage, and dipping down to 16. I choose to draw off the Gantry trigger, getting Elspeth Conquers Death. Command Tower comes into play for the Jarena player. The Doomsayer is then activated to make a human token, and Nahiri is then activated to exile the Moat. Shared Animosity then hits the field, which seems like a great play, especially against the Mind Cage. Spell Tithe Enforcer comes down next, and I have to stop to read it just to make sure I read it correctly. They move to attacks, and swing Jarena, Fireflux, and the Titan Hunter into the KNT player. Animosity triggers three times, and the Fireflux morphs away the Hunter, and it brings in Azulaport Cutthroat. KNT is assigned to block the only threat that can actually do damage, and no damage gets through. In the second main, the Human Token gets the Clamp, and they draw two cards while the Cutthroat drains each opponent for one, and they gain one life. To my turn, and a Spirit Token. I draw Aura of Silence, and cast Elspeth Conquers Death, gaining an Angel Token in the process, but having to pay the tax from the Spell Tithe Enforcer. When the Saga enters, I exile Nahiri, saving my enchantments from later destruction. I then cast Aura of Silence, gaining another Angel, and paying the tax again. I then activate the Bounty Agent, and target the Mind Cage and have it destroyed. I move to attacks, and swing one spirit and one angel into the KNT player, and one angel, three spirits, and the Archon of Absolution into the Jarena player. Damage is good, and KNT goes down to 10, and Jarena to 23. I gain the Monarchy back, and in response to the trigger, I use Reconnaissance to remove my attackers from combat and untap them all except for the Archon, which has protection from white. At the end of the turn, I draw Karmic Guide, and discard the Mesa Enchantress. Back to KNT, and they cast Chromatic the word I can never pronounce, and pay for the Spell Tithe trigger. The Chromatic is activated, and they draw 4 cards. A Forest comes into play, and they cast Lightning Greaves, again paying for the tax. Candy is equipped with the Greaves, and they pass. At the end of the turn, I draw Tome of Legends. 
over to Jarena, and the Doomsayer makes another token. It gets clamped, and they draw two cards, and gain one life, while each opponent loses one life. Fumiko the Low Blood hits the field, making things somewhat dangerous. Honey Broken Brow also hits the field, but before they go to combat, I sacrifice my Aura of Silence to destroy their shared animosity. Moving to attacks, Fire Flux and Arnie swing over into the KNT player, with Arnie being morphed into an Angel of Glory's Rise. The Angel brings back Trin, Zathard Necromancer, Magus of the Wheel, Knight of the White Orchid, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, and Adriana, Captain of the Guard. The Knight gets them a planes into play when it enters. The Angel proceeds to swing at me, which is a nifty trick since it wasn't declared, and I block it with a spirit. Kin T blocks with their commander, and no damage gets through this combat. Two creatures do die though, triggering the Cutthroat and the new Necromancer. At the end of the turn, Trin triggers, creating another human token. To my turn, and the Court of Grace creates an angel token. My Saga triggers, and I draw a planes. I drop the planes, and cast Norn's Annex for the cost and some life, using the remaining mana to pay for the tithe tax. I move to combat, and send all soldier tokens, the Archon, two angels, and two spirits into Jarena, and then two angels and two spirits into the KNT player, since they all have to attack if able. The Jarena player, seeing lethal, quits in response, and the KNT player follows them out. Good game to my opponents. We would have been able to manipulate our creatures with reconnaissance, so the quitting made sense this time, as the enchantment made Fumiko almost nullified. Beyond that, we didn't even need to summon our commander, Norika Yamazaki, because I didn't need to recur any of my enchantments until the Aura of Silence. As I said in the Heiko video, I prefer to play these Yamazaki as supportive commanders over the Tron style of build, though you can certainly build them that way. I do think the deck is a bit low on enchantments, but you can judge that for yourself by finding the deck list in the description below and checking it out. Thanks for joining me for some more casual commander play here on Dirtle Magic. Until next time, stay safe out there.